Jenny. Gutierrez. Gutierrez. How we pronounce it? Okay. Uh, basically, where, where we kind of start is uh, just ask about where you were born and. and okay. uh, I was born in 1924 in Hershey, Nebraska. Hershey. Okay. Uh -huh. And uh, my dad came over here first. Mm -hmm. And uh, then uh, he was here a few years. Then he went back after mother and boy and a girl that he left there. And so then, then in 1924, I was born in Hershey. See. And I was there until oh, let's see what year, until 1935. So what was it like, Hershey, Nebraska? Very, very I, small town. Very, very small town, but I. I walked those day and night, mm -hmm. I and mean, I wasn't scared at all, but my mother was, and I, but I wasn't. Where have you been? I said, well, I've been watching him play basketball. Well, well, Never over, thought about it. All over town. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All over town, and you knew everybody. So you just weren't afraid. Yeah. And it was a, a different time back then, that everybody kind of watched out for themselves, mm -hmm. and, yeah. and others, and that's it. Sometimes they wouldn't let me in the hall where they were playing. And I said, well, my brother's playing. Ooh. And I'd sit down with my brother Modesto's playing. I want to see him. Okay, come on in. <laughs> so then my little decided that I bet that's where I was. <laughs> so she didn't Watching worry about <laughs> so, uh, And he was older than I was. I was even in high school when I was probably, well, at that time I was seven or eight. So you're the little sister. Then. Yeah, the little sister. But there were two sisters at home. But I was the only one that liked to go vagabonding around mom's house. Now that they kind of they kind of watch over you. So that's how, that's how I started yeah. being felt. kind of nosy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you were out there. Just but I was out. Finding out what was on. Oh, it was funny, and I still have good memories of that. And uh, they celebrated the Hershey celebrated its uh, anniversary, of 100 years, mm -hmm. and my husband and I went. Oh, and uh, uh, they just said, go wherever you want to, what you remember. Mm -hmm. So, of course, the school was what I remember the most. Went through every room, went upstairs where my brother was in high school. And uh, every, and there he was, his picture there oh, when he graduated nice. from there. Oh, great. That's some good memories. Uh -huh. yeah. so, so that was one of the good highlights of my life, mm -hmm. Hershey, Nebraska. And so you went uh, through high school? No, you I went to, from you kindergarten through fourth grade. Fourth grade, uh -huh. and then, and then, we're then we moved to Lexington. To Lexington, uh -huh. and that's where you went through uh -huh. high school. High school, I, I got there when I was fifth grader, mm -hmm. and I graduated from high school then. In Lexington, the Lexington High School. Uh -huh. But I got married first, and I had a little girl. Oh, I see. And that's she's my oldest girl, mm -hmm. Kathleen, and uh, but. They asked me to come back and finish my school, and so I went back. And you did. And I did. Graduated from high school, and I didn't stop there. I wanted to do go on to school and be a teacher. That, that was my goal when I was a second grader. Mm -hmm. You wanted to teach. I wanted to be a teacher. Yeah. And so from uh, from that time, from uh, second grade teacher uh, in high sc in school, mm -hmm. that was my entire go all the way through. And so then we left Hershey in 1935. Mm -hmm. And then mother was so upset because we had come to a, they, were, they, weren't, they didn't have her beets anymore, sugar beets. Oh. And so dad came to Lexington and, and that's where we uh, made our life after that. That's it. They, they had sugar beets? Sugar beets. Oh, good. That's good. We had sugar beets yeah. here, but not in, not in Hershey and North Platte. They didn't grow that anymore. I see. I see. So then after the... After high school. Then, I, of course, I went to grade school all the way through in, in country schools, because wherever there were beets, we, we'd go to that place. And mm -hmm. so whenever there, uh, there wasn't any school, I mean, there wasn't any beets going on, uh, were already done, and we were at this different place, but at that school that I went to, mm -hmm. a rural school. And I went to a lot of rural schools. The one room type, one uh, room. with all the grades. <laughs> yes, that, with all that the grades. Sort of and that's where I got, well, I, in Hershey, I wanted to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. But for sure, that's where I was going to be a, a country school teacher. Mm -hmm. 
So, so the teachers that you had, they uh, impressed you. Impressed and that's, me. That's really what yeah. you wanted to do. Yeah. And an old car that we had, we bought it in 1931. And Dad couldn't drive. So guess who learned to drive? I did. You did. <laughs> <laughs> so I drove that car to school. And uh, no one ever asked me, do you have your driver's license? <laughs> so I but you know how to drive. So that was <laughs> so, and then I graduated from Lexington High School mm -hmm. in 1944. So then when I graduated from high school, I took my normal training test and passed it. Mm -hmm. And that's how I became a teacher. But I remember walking those roads to country school, myself and another, my sister. But she didn't like school. <laughs> she didn't care for it. No, she just, she just cried all the time. <laughs> so, but... Uh, you she, couldn't get enough of it, though. And I really did. You loved it. Uh, she did. So then I took normal training when I was in high school, mm -hmm. in Lexington High School. By that time, my sister had quit school. Oh, and she went to a, just staying home. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, she decided that she wanted a profession, too. And so she went to... Uh, become a beauty operator. Okay. And she was mm -hmm. not a beauty operator. She but uh, I was a teacher. So you just For went. how long? Oh, I went to see this was in 44 when I got my certificate mm -hmm. to teach. And this is going to Corning mm -hmm. in the summertime and to school. And I graduated in 42. See. So two years I, I went to summer school mm -hmm. and got my normal training and all my teacher. teacher. Carney and then, and then to teach, taught, taught in Lexington. You taught right. in the rural and schools. And then I taught in Lexington. Mm -hmm. And some of the rural schools too, the, the rural one schools. room. Uh -huh. The one, but one all room. of the rural schools that you taught in throughout Dawson County. Uh, just about all. 43 all. years. Because every, uh, since 1944, when I got my teacher certificate, mm -hmm. I would be teaching in one school and I'd teach there for a couple of years. And then another school had a lot, another group of people would come, school board members, want to know if I want to go to the other school. Somewhere else. And I would go wherever they gave me oh, the most sure. money. Sure, yeah, well, that's, that's a good motivation. <laughs> oh, yeah. And they'd, I'd tell them, well, I don't have a car. Well, we'll furnish the car for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they furnished the car for me for a couple of years. And then after that, well, then I, uh, the folks and I, we bought a little jalopy and I. Yeah, something good. Yes. And they had heard about me and they, had all of my credentials and everything. And, and they wanted you to come up there. And they wanted me to come up there. So did you go? Following your idea. You did up there, yeah. I said, I said, let me, let me think about it and then come back in a couple of weeks or so. Mm -hmm. And they came back and I figured out that if I had a little better car, by then my husband was in, in the service. Okay. In the military. Uh-huh. Okay. See, he left in 44. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, 44. Yes, because we were married in 42, 43, 44, yes, and he mm -hmm. was in 44. Mm -hmm. And all of us years that he was in service, I was teaching school. Teaching. Uh -huh. yeah. But not just in one school. Two years I stayed the most in one. Right. But the one that I, that went, that, that I told you was sitting there waiting for me, mm -hmm. I stayed mm -hmm. there 16 years. Those were the last 16 years. At Gothenburg? At Gothenburg. No kidding. Oh, yes. <laughs> Gothenburg. I had the upper grades. Yeah. And I really liked that. Now, did you commute? Uh-huh. From, from? But I got a better car. From Lexington. Oh, it was a better oh, car. Oh, she, yeah, she yeah. got a Park Avenue by then. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> For joining us. That's great. We, uh, this is, uh, we're filming for the, uh, it's a greatest generation project where we uh, talk to people and to just find out about their life stories and that sort of thing. So, uh, basically, where where I like to start is just uh, where you're born or your upbringing. Okay. I said what. I was born in Nashville, Tennessee. Nashville. Uh, August twenty fifth, nineteen fourteen. I see. And uh, shortly after I was born, my father moved to uh, New York. Okay. He knew that war was coming on, yes. so he bought a farm mm -hmm. in uh, New York State okay. across the river from uh, New York City, the mm -hmm. Hudson River. So uh, I can recall uh, the railroad tracks ran in front of uh, the uh, 
body of water that was in front of our farm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I remember the World War I soldiers mm -hmm. during the summer opening up the windows and waving at us where we stood the, on the shore. On the train. Yeah. Okay. When they were on the train. So mm -hmm. that was my one of my earliest memories. Oh, yes. Then uh, he sold the farm right after war ended. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we moved to New York City. There, my mother died in the flu epidemic that started about 1918 and took about 20 million people. Oh my gosh. And uh, it's, it was called the Spanish flu epidemic. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, my youngest brother was only two weeks old. Mm -hmm. And uh, my, her mother died about two weeks after she did not knowing that she had passed away. So, my father had six children from two weeks to about yeah. eight or nine years. So he had to kind of farm us out. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, I went with my uncle and aunt who lived in Masontown, Pennsylvania. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, then he remarried and moved back to Nashville. And uh, I was the last one that he wanted to have rejoin the family. So my uncle took me to Pittsburgh. We lived in Ma Masontown, Pennsylvania, which is not far from Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. And uh, he turned me over to the Traveler's Aid Society. Now the Traveler's Aid Society had been sending orphan trains west from all the uh, eastern communities mm -hmm. that had lost so many people that there were thousands of orphans left. And they put them on trains and sent them west. Now was this in the 20s, would you say, or, or 30s? Oh, this was in the 20s. In the, in the 20s. 20s, okay. Yeah, because okay. my mother died in January 1920. Okay. And this was at the height of the uh, Flu epidemic. Oh, yeah, yes. So uh, he took me to Pittsburgh mm -hmm. and turned me over to the Travelers Aid Society. Okay. They put a big label on me mm -hmm. called Travelers Aid, mm -hmm. and uh, I was sent from Pittsburgh to Chicago and from Chicago to Nashville. So <laughs> My uncle dropped me off in Pittsburgh, yeah. and I ended up the next day in mm. Nashville. In Nashville. Oh, okay, so <laughs> you made the, the round trip. I, yeah. made, I made the trip. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, we, I lived in Nashville, went to school there, mm -hmm. of course. And when I was 13, uh, my father, having difficulties with my stepmother, she gave him the ultimatum of her or the children. So he chose the children. So he put us in his, he divorced her, put us in his Ford with the ice and glass windows, mm -hmm. and we went to Chicago. Okay. All six of us sitting. What, what did your father do? What was his? Uh, he did everything under the sun, and he was good at everything he did. I see. Because he, he had the farm for a while? He had the yeah. farm for once. He had businesses, different mm -hmm. kinds of businesses. Okay. Uh, he ended up uh, at the age of 60 uh, d doing, uh, I'm trying to think of what it was that he did, uh, he became a pattern maker for Pratt Whitney Okay. okay. Th that built airplanes. Metal and that sort yeah. Of so anyway, uh, I, uh, we got to Chicago. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went to high school there. Okay. And uh, met my husband later mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. through cousins in Nashville because my husband had gone to uh, Peabody College in Nashville to get his master's degree. Okay. Now, so you travel back and forth between Nashville and Chicago? And no. My, my sister went to Chicago to, oh, okay. on vacation uh -huh. and met my husband, 
Oh, I see. And, so and then when he came back uh, on back, uh, back home mm -hmm. to Lincoln, why he uh, stopped off at Chicago to visit relatives, and he called my sister, mm -hmm. and I was living <laughs> in the same house, and so he met me. And when he went back home, I got the letter yeah. instead of my sister. Oh. <laughs> but uh, he was a very athletic person, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, he went to the University of Nebraska. Uh, he became the big six champion in swimming, oh. in uh, the backstroke, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. in diving. And he had a nickname of Fancy diver, fancy dresser, cook it. Because that he was, huh? That, that, that he was, that's right. That's right. That's right. So after we were married, um, he, uh, he got a job mm -hmm. with the Lincoln School System okay. as uh, a coach and swimming. Uh, teaching. And teaching yeah. phys ed. Sure. Well, my son was born in uh, a year and a half later, mm -hmm. and uh, he had heard from friends who had gone down to the Panama Canal Zone that you got paid twice as much as salary there than um, Lincoln was paying. Mm -hmm. So he applied to the Panama Canal Zone and was accepted. So he went down in August from New York. He sailed and went to the Panama Canal. Mm -hmm. And uh, in November, I, no, it must have been October, I had the baby uh, and went to the Panama Canal Zone through uh, New Orleans. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we spent, of course, the next month, war began. Mm -hmm. So uh, we spent the whole four years in blackout, in uh, the canal zone. We lived in uh, Balboa on the Pacific side. Oh. And we could see the ships entering into the uh, canal. Oh, that, that must have been quite the sight. That was quite a sight, right. And there are, only, there are only two that I really remember. One was we saw the Missouri coming home mm -hmm. after the uh, peace treaty had been signed. And uh, all the people uh, went to the Gatun locks and stood uh, along the locks to cheer. As, as the boat came through the ship. As the boat came through. Sure, sure. And it was, it had to come through very slowly because there was only about six inches on each side. <laughs> yeah, it was, was such a, a huge, ship. Yeah. huge ship. Mm -hmm. So uh, the cheer, uh, the uh, sailors on board were yeah. just right above us right practically. There, there were, yeah. So they cheered and we cheered and uh, they uh, threw the sailors threw their hats to the children who were standing there. Oh. And my daughter still has two hats from the... Oh my gosh. The well, thanks for uh, coming down here today and talking to us. And, so, and uh, what we're doing is the uh, uh, television documentary. It's a project. We call it the Faces of the Greatest Generation. And uh, we appreciate your coming down here with us today. Uh, but we're, basically where we start is kind of where where, uh, where you were born? South Bend, Nebraska. Oh, in South Bend? Oh, yeah. And that, is that where you grew up? Yeah. In South Bend? Yeah. And what was that like, small town outside of uh, Omaha? Yeah. Probably 75 people. Oh, yeah. One room schoolhouse? Yeah. That thing? I went to... District 57 for eight years, mm -hmm. and I went to Murdoch for high school until oh, good old Franklin D. Roosevelt said, I'm going to draft you. Yeah. And you did. Oh, yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So then 
I went for basic training mm -hmm. at Fort McClellan, Alabama, mm -hmm. and there for eight weeks. Mm -hmm. Got on troop train, and <clears throat> first stop was Rome, Georgia, where they had a canteen. Every soldier got a sandwich, a cookie, and a glass of wine, and to go through, I don't know, other states. That was basic training? No, that was after. After, after basic, oh yeah. And I was being chipped west, and I went to Cincinnati, Chicago, Des Moines. I had a three-day pass at Omaha, and I went, uh, stopped at the famous USO Canteen at North Platte, Nebraska. Oh, in North Platte, oh yeah. Um, and ended up at Pittsburgh, California, Camp mm -hmm. uh, Oh, MacArthur's buddy. He was a prisoner of war also mm -hmm. for 1125 days before being rescued. Uh, and so. Uh, in the South Pacific? Yeah. Don't worry about it. Yeah. In the Philippines. Island. Philippines, yeah. And so, while I was there, I helped dig up uh, bones of U.S. servicemen killed by the Japanese on the death march. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the Japanese never did go by the Geneva Convention. They, yeah, on the death march, if a soldier fell down, Jack needed to kick him, get up, and if he didn't get up, they had a club, they club him to death, club him just about to death, mm -hmm. kick him off the side of the road, or else they'd take a bayonet, jab through him quite a few times, till he was just about dead, kick him over, and everybody keep moving. There were 69,000 people, Philippine people, and American troops, Philippine scout troops that were on the death march. And, uh, well, I have a picture of MacArthur and, oh, General Wainwright. General Wainwright, okay. Uh, Wainwright standing right behind MacArthur, mm -hmm. and MacArthur was in charge of the surrender of the Japanese on the Battle of Missouri. Mm -hmm. I have a picture of that. I have a picture of MacArthur and Wainwright and a Philippine scout commander and another commander. Gotta be this or that